All right, so now that we've uh, taken care of that portion, um, I want to go into some of the syntax and some methods of uh, regular expressions. All right, so we're going to start off with um, match and search, which are two very uh, common regular expression methods. So the first thing is re.search. So let's just go over some of this uh, syntax. So re.search has three parameters, or three arguments, and the first one is the pattern, the regular expression pattern. The second is the string, and the third um, includes flags. So flags we'll go over a little later, but they're um, sort of special options. So if you want to sort of ignore capital letters or deal with multi-lines, flags will help with that. So the key difference, so we have re, uh, regular expression dot search and regular expression dot match. Where re dot match, of course, uh, it's the same, it has the same arguments or the same parameters as re dot search. Now the key difference is re dot search searches anywhere within the string as opposed to re.match it only searches for the big at the uh, beginning of your string so re.match searches at the beginning of your string and re.search searches anywhere within your string so let's just uh, go through some examples okay so these are very simple examples as you get the hang of it we'll go through more uh, a lot more difficult examples and I'll give some uh, real world examples as well all right, so in this case, re.match, we're, we're match, this is our, our match pattern, which is just a C, and we're, this is our string. So we're looking for C within all of this. Okay. So remember, re.match only matches if um, your pattern is at the beginning of the string. So our case, C is not at the, uh, the beginning of the string. So our pattern, C, is not at the beginning of the string. It's actually in the middle of the string. So this C is... Uh, going to return a none value or an empty uh, result set. So when I run this, we get no value back, but in reality, we're getting the none value, which is uh, doesn't display anything. All right, so now if we do this with search, remember, search searches anywhere. It, it's not confined to just the beginning of the string, so if I click search, uh, if I run the cell, we get a match object. Now, let me just explain this match object. Um, so we get a match object back, and span 2 to 3 is just the uh, index location. So 0, 1, 2, and it ends at 3. So our match starts at uh, index 2 and ends at 3. So this is just giving us the index location, and this is giving us what we match. So in this case, we match the uh, C. So that's all the uh, match object does. All right, so now you can use uh, re.match as a Boolean. So above when we ran this, we actually got none as a value. So none, when you when you take the uh, Boolean value of none, it actually returns false. So this is a, a way to check if you're getting a hit or not, if you're getting a match or not. So if I run this uh, Boolean on this match, I get a false. So this is a, a good way to check if you got a hit, you can do some other stuff. If you didn't get a hit, you can do other stuff. Now, we can do the Boolean of something of a hit. So a Boolean of a match, in this case, we're trying to match A, and A is at the beginning of the string, so we should get a match, so the Boolean value should be true. So let me just run this, and we get uh, the true value. All right, so the problem with um, re.search is it only looks for the first uh, match. It doesn't include all the matches. So let me just show you this. So we ran this code before, we get a match, um, because C is included within the string. Now, if we have multiple C's, as you can see here, there's a C, there's a C in the middle, and there's a C in the end. Re.search only searches for the first instance. So let me just run this, and it only pulls out the first instance, which is here. It does not um, pull out this instance, which is at the end. So re.search only pulls out the first instance. All right. So multi-line. So re.search works with uh, new lines as well. So if the C starts after a new line, it will locate the, uh, the C. So it's not confined to the first line. Um, it could work after the new line as well. See, we get a match at, we get a match of C at index six and seven. All right, now re.match on the other hand, um, only looks for something at the beginning of the string. So if we have a new line and C at the beginning of a new line, it doesn't consider that uh, the beginning of the string. It always looks for the beginning, beginning of a string. So in this case, um, despite C starting at the beginning of a new line, it doesn't work because re.match is looking for a C at the beginning of the, the string. 
So in this case, it doesn't work. Now I just want to go over how there's a way you can actually print the output as a string output. You can print your match objects as a string output. All right. So let, just going over this again, re match, uh, we're going to match it A, and the string is this. So we should get a match once we get a match. But there is a way you can print out this uh, A. So if you want to print out the output, all we do is uh, dot group. We can use the uh, group method. So re.match, and you just add a group method to the end and parentheses. You don't have to put any parameters because the default parameter is zero. So the default value is zero here. Um, so let me just run this. We get the A, and now let me just run it again, adding the default value of zero. So the zero value um, will pull out your entire match. Um, this is important, just remember that the default value is zero because we'll be using other group numbers as we get into groups. All right. So same same uh, output, we get the A. All right, um, so this works with uh, RE search as well. We did RE match with group and RE search also uh, pulls out the string when you use the uh, group method. Okay, so it's sometimes useful to pull out certain patterns, right? So in this case, we're just pulling out letters, but say we wanna pull out patterns. And these are uh, special uh, character sets, which we'll go into later, but I just want to show you that we can actually pull out certain sets of uh, characters. So in this case, we're pulling out this whole portion here, despite specifically not entering these characters within our uh, string search. So uh, you can pull out all types of uh, patterns, strings, depending on which uh, character sets or wildcard to use, and we'll get into all that later. Okay, a couple of things, uh, a couple of other uh, methods are the start and end. So earlier, let me see. Um, when we pull out, when we run something like re.match, let me just run this again. We get a match object and we get a span and we get the match. So um, if you want to just pull out this info, right? So this is giving us all this info, but if you want to pull out the start and the end so you can utilize it or save it to a variable, what you can do is you can actually uh, run this dot start or dot end. So re.search and dot start would actually pull out the uh, starting index. So the six and the end will pull out the ending index, which is seven. So these are useful if you want to save these indexes to a variable. Next up, uh, literal matching. Now, in this case, it's not N or an A, it's an N uh, followed by an A. So for us to get a match, it has to actually, it has to match exactly. exactly. This is uh, called literal matching because um, it has to literally match the uh, regular expression that we've inputted. So in this case, NA, um, is not going to return uh, an output if it's just n or if it's just a. You need to have both n and a, and a has to be following n. So let's uh, let's just run this. Uh, we get no result, so that means it's a none value, so so no returns. Now, if we want to pull out an n or an a, we can use this or symbol, which we use in Python. So n or a will look for the first instance. Remember, r dot search looks for the first instance. Um, so either an N or A will be pulled out. So in this case, A is the first instance. So let's just run this and we get an A. Now, just another example, I replaced the A with the B. So the first instance will actually be this N. So remember, it searches for an N or an A. And if we run this, we get the match N. Now you're not confined to just N or A. You could use as many or statements as you want. So in this case, we're searching for an N, an A, or a B. And if you look at the string, the first hit's going to be a B. So let me just run this. Okay, so it matches a B. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly just introduce you to, uh, let me just actually, re.findall. Mm. Actually, all right, just run this, all right. So I'll just quickly introduce you to re.findall. Now what re.findall does is pulls out all the instances. So earlier, re.search was only pulling out the first instance. re.findall will pull out every single instance as a list. Now there's a couple of things you're gonna have to worry about when using re.findall, and we'll go into all this later when we use groupings. But re.findall will pull out all of the um, instances. So in this case, we were looking for n or a. So it's gonna pull out this n, and it's going to pull out this A. So if we run this, 
Oh, uh, there's two, a, two A's actually. There's an A here and there's an A here. So it's going to pull out all three instances. N, A, A. All right. Now, let me go into another example with uh, multiple characters, uh, literal search. So, RA.search, we're searching for this uh, expression ABCD. ABCD is found here and it's found here. So, let's see what we pull out if we run ABCD. Okay. So, we're going to we'll pull out the first match, which is this ABCD. So, this is a literal match. We have the characters ABCD in order and we found the literal match of ABCD here. So that's what our RE search does when you have multiple characters. It um, it does a literal search. Now with find all, it'll find all instances, of course, and we have ABCD here and we have ABCD here. So it should find two instances. So let me just run this. And there we go. We have two instances of ABCD. Now we don't get any other info. We don't get the uh, where it found it or stuff like that. It just pulls out the uh, instances. All right, so that's it with this. Uh, portion now we're going to get into character sets all right so i think uh, that's it for this video in the next video we'll begin with character sets which is uh some of the meat of regular expressions all right so i'll see you guys next time